Now we have from Ostreiter Fachhochschule, Martin, uh, Martinez, sorry, I just... <laughs> um, uh, he will present um, as the IPNG stack and automated testing as soon as I have... Okay, the stage is yours. Yeah. Perfect, thank you. Hello, everybody. Thank you for making it up here. So I'm today going to present the IPNG stack. I hope everybody heard of it. Probably not, because I invented it last week. Um, so first of all, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm working at the Institute of, um, for Networks and Security at the Ostschweizer Fachhochschule. Um, maybe you can get a little jealous at my working place. It looks great. Um, so, something about myself, I'm a master's student. I'm also working as a network and research engineer at the, at the Institute for Network and Security. And here are my contact details if you would like to know more about the presentation. So today we're going to talk about network testing. I think everybody tests their network, right? Everybody does ping, trace route, whatever. M some people have automated testing, some people do not test. Some people test in production. Let's try to change that. So what I did is I created four tools, kind of a tool chain, which allowed me to generate some a baseline of tests for a network. So in order we can test without having too much trouble and don't need to do it manually. As you might notice, I and PG, I just took the first letters. Some people say engineers are creative. Sometimes we're not. Um, next up, the first thing of my tool chain is InfraHub. I use it as my source of truth. So here we have all my devices in there, all the information, all the IP addresses, everything I need. Um, it also has built-in version control, which could, in a, in a further use case, then help me test my network if I try to, uh, to change something. So when I go ahead, I have this, this cool feature which renders artifacts. I can define for every single device or every single device group. I can, I can generate an artifact which I can define with YAML, or, well, it generates me a YAML in this case, but I can define it with Jinja or Python, and this gives me uh, a way to generate my testing config. Writing testing configs usually by hand is a little tedious and nobody likes it. So we love this feature. It's very nice. Also, the reason why we do it in InfraHub or Netbox or wherever is that we have all the information there. We don't want to invent it. We don't want to go there if we install a new switch, do like switch one test data, and then do this for uh, my 10,000 switches in production. I like to be that automatic. So what InfraHub does, it does it automatically for me. I also mentioned it, it's it does it with either Python or Jinja. Um, I can, after that, pull these artifacts using the API or using the SDK, and they're generated up on creation. So if I create a new device, what it does, it, it generates my artifact, so I have my testing configuration. I know it's a little small here, but we can see um, a table with all my artifacts. That's only a small network and it automatically generated my, my tests. So what we're testing with is NUTS, the Network Unit Testing System. You might have heard from it. Urs Baumann has presented it at Swinog 32. So what NUTS can do is it can apply tests, test cases based on your predefined network topology to your actual network and have tests confirm the correct states. So we're not doing it on a config basis. We can but we're doing it on the real network. So we're going on every single device and we're testing something. We're testing if the config is correct, we're testing if BGP is up, we're testing if the neighborships are here. Here, I already mentioned it, here we have 
um, have the, the testing list, we can check for BGP neighbor count, we can check CDP neighbors if a particular is there. Um, the network unit test testing system is open source. Urs and me are the maintainers of it. It's built, uh, built on, the, on the PyTest framework. Probably most people that use Python already know it. It's a very, very well-known uh, testing framework. Um, there's an easy creation of custom tests, so everybody can write <laughs> his own tests believe, based on their needs. It comes with some predefined tests we can see on the right-hand side. Um, the, the test usage is simple. We just define a YAML, and we can put our information there. We say router1 needs to have this ARP table neighbor, or this ARP table entry, and then it tests, goes on the device, and checks if this, this entry is in there. Um, also, having an inventory is sometimes hard. So we don't want to write it using our, our own skill, using our own hands. So we just pull it out of Netbox or InfraHub or whatever. Um, next, we can see the, the test definition I, I said. We can just write it there. We say router 1, gigabit Ethernet, and then we can say, oh, it, it's supposed to have this MAC address, this MTU, this speed. Um, on the right-hand side, we can see um, an inventory. This one is using YAML. That could be generated. That could be written by hand, whatever. There are also some other plugins. It uses Nornier, so there's a variety of them. So how it leverages um, the InfraHub stack or the INPG stack, it, it uses basically these hooks on step one. We're um, generating these YAML files, these test files for every single device we have in InfraHub and then feeding it into NUTS. What NUTS does next is when it tries to execute the test, it goes back to InfraHub and pulls the device information. So in the test, we, we probably used a synonym like router1. Then it, NUTS goes back and checks what is router1 actually doing, what IP does it have, what logging credentials, whatever. Then next, we're feeding all our information into Prometheus. Um, we're using a PyTest plugin for that. So we're actually using the push gateway there. And then from there, Prometheus pulls the information down. What this does, it allows us to visualize our testing, our testing progress and um, helps, us, helps us get like, a better grasp of what is happening in the network. Usually, it would give a CLI output, which in our case, like it kind of does it. But if you want to do it sporadically or, or like, on certain intervals, it, it doesn't really work because you have to s sit in front of the console. Having a nice dashboard wi with information is much nicer. So, what we're doing is we're integrating it with a visual uh, visual visualization framework. Um, so we're using actually Grafana to do to visualize it. Um, we're feeding our information into Gravana, which provides us some ex observability. Um, we can explore some metrics. We can, we can do dynamic dashboards. We could also alert based upon what happened and what we want to do. Um, and then it's a, it should look something like this. Um, this one, the screenshot is just um, the test execution I did. I booted up a small container lab. It was. I think it was 16 leaves and 8 spines. And I, I got all my tests I, I generated from InfraHub. It was around 3,200 tests. I got automatically, didn't have to, have to do a thing for it. Just generate the data or generate the devices. Based upon the topology, then my, my artifacts were generated. I pulled them down for nuts, executed it, and it fed it right to Prometheus, and it visualized it in Grafana to see how many failed, how many passed. Of course, the screenshot has no failed ones. It took me a couple of attempts because container lab sometimes crashed with so many leaves and spines. Um, so how I said, architecture looks like that. We're downloading the, the artifacts, the, the device, uh, the test definitions, and also we're pulling the, the data out of InfraHub with our devices. After that, we're feeding it into Prometheus and then visualizing it using Grafana. Um, 
if somebody is interested or wants to know more on that, I did a small paper, um, a small demo paper. Here's the, the QR code if you want to scan it. And there's also a demo. It's a small seven-step tutorial where you can explore how it works. You can boot up your own container lab and then um, go ahead and play with it. It's also working using GitHub code spaces, so you don't need to do anything on your local device. You can just boot up the topology, get to know it, test it, break something, and work. Well, that's it. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. We have plenty of time for questions, so please ask. You made it Good. very clear, obviously. <laughs> yeah, seems that way. Did somebody understand anything? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Perfect. I saw at least two hands. Ah, oh, there's one. Hi, I'm Bartek from Swisscom. Hello. Um, you're using Nordin for to fetch all the data from the devices, right? Yes. From what I saw in your repo, right now for those predefined tests, this is uh, CLI scraping, right? From by Napalm. Do you plan to use something more in direction of structured data like NetConf or, or this is possible without with some without any issues? Yeah. Um, there's definitely a push to, to, to further improve nuts and, like, um, going back to all the the predefined tests we have, those are all basically using Napalm, the the, the device automation layer, um, and that was kind of the easy approach to get like a variety covered. But there are s definitely some pushes to do to scrape APIs, to to do something with NetConf, maybe Yang. But we're also happy to accept push re uh, pull requests if somebody fancies that. Okay. I might have like a slightly off-topic question to NOTS itself, but uh, are you able to define in NOTS like flows, or is it just doing tests from like beginning to the end? Um, flows. So. You can just do multiple files and execute them uh, one after another, if you mean that. But but you mean like a dependency graph, yes. something like that? No, that's currently not possible. But okay, thank you. Okay, so if there are no more questions, thank you very much again. Thank you.